Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing your characters. In a recent video and in social media posts, I announced that I would be doing another video where I draw your characters. This time around, I'm accepting both original characters and gotcha characters because I couldn't decide which one to do, so I chose both. <laughs> Many of you have been asking me to draw your OCs, but many of you have also been requesting I draw your gotcha characters. Ah, uh, so yeah. I also couldn't decide which characters I wanted to draw. There were so many amazing characters. So I decided to randomly pick the characters this time around. I was feeling very indecisive this week. <laughs> Tell me randomly pick. I'm using picker wheel. This first wheel will pick which submission option I'll choose from. The options are Instagram hashtag threads, Twitter, email, and YouTube hashtag, and this time the wheel chose threads. I'm new to threads and I don't have a huge following on there, so the submission amount was pretty small, but at the time I counted 101 submissions. The number I got was number 11, so I went down to the 11th entry, and the character that was picked is Dahlia. So let's start drawing her. Now I'm actually going to be working on these pieces traditionally. However, I am doing my sketches digitally, and then I will transfer my sketches to the paper I plan to use. I am keeping the concept pretty simple because the art supplies I plan to use are outside of my comfort zone, so instead of pushing myself to do a complicated illustration and using art supplies I'm not used to, I plan to make things a bit easier for myself by drawing something in my comfort zone, that way using the new supplies won't feel as intimidating. My piece is very much inspired by the picture that was submitted of Dahlia. I have her making the same expression where she's winking and her tongue is sticking out. I also have her hand making a peace or victory sign. I really like drawing her hairstyle and outfit. I think it's super cute. And I don't get to draw braids super often. Also, I was super happy because I finally remembered to buy a light pad. I got this one on sale for like $15. If you don't know, for the past several months when transferring my sketches to paper, I had to use my tablet because the cable for my old light pad got lost when I moved and I couldn't find it. Using my tablet as a makeshift light pad did work, but it was often hard to see my sketches. Thankfully for this video, I made sure to buy a light pad in advance so that it would come in time. And I forgot how wonderful they are. I can see my sketch so clearly. Also, it's hard to see, but I'm using a mechanical pencil with red lead to transfer my sketch. I'll usually use color pencils, but I thought a mechanical pencil would be a bit easier on my arm, uh, since I've still been dealing with some pain in it. And after some time, I had transferred my sketch to the paper. But before jumping into coloring, I wanted to take some time to prep the supplies I'll be using. The lovely people over at Art Tech sent me two packs of acrylic paint markers. This is the regular set, and we also have the anime set. Here's a look at the colors in the regular set, and there looks to be a wide range of colors. In the box, we have these stickers that you can put on the bottoms of the markers so that you can identify the different colors. You get stickers for the side of the markers as well, but for now, I only applied the stickers to the bottom. Oh, also, here's a look at one of the markers. As you can see, it has a brush nib. Many paint markers have bullet nibs or chisel nibs, so a brush nib is a unique feature. Anyways, now that I have the markers labeled, I can make a swatch chart. I cut my paper so that it is a size that can fit inside the box. I have noticed I really like when I keep my swatch charts with my supplies. It's much more convenient. Uh, so yeah, I just swatch all the colors and write the numbers under the color. Since there are 60 colors, I'm keeping my swatches pretty small so that I don't run out of room. Also, I messed up and accidentally swatched color 47 when I wasn't supposed to yet. And this bothered me a lot, but I kept going. In this regular set, there is a nice range of colors. We also get metallic colors and fluorescent colors. So if you're looking for a bit of variety with your marker types, you may prefer this set. But we also have the anime set. I have to say, I love the box of the anime set. It's so cute. Just like with the other box, we have 60 colors and stickers to label the markers. And just like before, I will swatch these colors. Like I said, the regular set had metallic colors and fluorescent colors. However, the anime set only has normal paint markers, and they seem to range on the more pastel or lighter side. I personally prefer the marker selection of the anime set, since it does offer more normal colors, and I will use these more often. I don't use metallic or fluorescent colors very often, so I prefer having more of the normal colors. 
I do want to point out that there are a lot of duplicate colors between the sets, so I'm not sure if it would be worth it to buy both. I would recommend comparing the colors and choosing the box that works best for you. However, it is nice having access to all the colors, and having duplicates can sometimes be nice. <laughs> okay, now that I have all the supplies swatched and ready to go, let's go color Dahlia. I am starting by filling in the skin with color O2. It's a very light peachy color. Also, I am using watercolor paper. I have found that with acrylic paint markers, I often get the best results when I use watercolor paper. If you are familiar with my videos, you will know this is not my first time using paint markers. I feel like for my previous illustrations I have made with paint markers, they weren't super rendered or they didn't feel like I fully dived into the paint markers if that makes sense. So this time around, I wanted to try rendering and shading things more, especially since I did have access to so many colors. For the lightest shading color, I'm using C19. Also, you may have noticed that the red for my pencil has kind of blended into the skin color a bit. I was afraid this may happen, but that's why I chose the color red. It doesn't matter too much if it blends into the skin tone a bit. It actually makes for a really nice effect, I feel like. For the darker shadows like this one under the neck, I use color 21. Once I lay down the color, I use C19 to blend the shadow out a bit. That is one of the goals I had when using paint markers this time around. I wanted to try to be more blendy and painterly instead of blocking everything in kind of like with cell shading. And I don't know if I totally succeeded at this with this piece, but we'll talk about that later. I went back to the face to deepen the shadows a bit with color 21 and also colored the tongue in with marker 22. I was about to move on to coloring something else, but then I noticed I didn't shade in the hand. <laughs> uh, so I did that real quick. Shading the skin was a long process, but I am happy with how it turned out. I do really like the lighter skin tone options in this set. They are very nice. With a lot of markers, sometimes the lighter skin tones feel too saturated or don't get light enough for my liking, but for this set, I really like the colors. Next, I'm moving on to coloring the hair. I'm starting with the darker areas and I'm filling them with marker 53. I'll add shading with marker C52 in a little bit. I do want to let you know that I am using markers from both sets. However, a lot of the colors I use can be found in the anime set. I used a few colors from the regular set for some of the in-between colors to help the shading have a smoother transition. Oh, also many of you have been asking how my arm has been doing and it has been doing better. If you don't know, I kind of heard it a few weeks ago, but it has been improving. Some days it gets flared up and I try to take it easy. But it has been feeling pretty good. That being said, I'm still trying to go easy on my arm. And if it starts to hurt, I try not to push it. So I still haven't been making much progress on my webcomic. But I work on it whenever I feel like I'm able to. I did finish another page last night. Uh, so that's good. Anyways, back to the hair. I use color 50 for the highlights and I put them in first so I can refine the shape of them when I go over the areas with my base color. After the highlights, I use marker 53 to place some shadows and I'll use marker 51 for the base color. I feel like the hair is where I lack the blendiness that I was looking for. I was kind of trying to blend the colors, but I wasn't totally sure on how to do that. So the hair ended up feeling a bit more cell shaded. Overall, I don't feel like it looks bad, it's just different from what I was wanting. I didn't film all the hair process since it was taking a long time, uh, but here's what it looked like once it was finished. I quickly colored and shaded the bow. I really love her yellow bow, it's such a fun pop of color and it's super cute. I was a little nervous to color the arms since they have translucent sleeves. Thankfully, it was actually pretty simple. I shaded them normally and then went over them quickly and lightly with marker CO2. It's a slightly warm off-white color or like a very light cream. I used the same marker along with some purple to color the white underpart of her dress. I really liked how the purple blended into the lighter cream. I was a bit nervous about it, but I feel like it turned out nice. Next was the dress and I feel like this is where I kind of learned how blending markers works. Also, I did have to make the dress be a lighter green than the original color. I didn't really have the right greens that fit the original color, uh, so I had to improvise a little bit. I hope that's okay. There is a pretty big jump in value from my highlight color to my mid-tone color. So to try to make it work, I tried my best to go back and forth between all the colors a lot. And because I was going back and forth between the colors and also working while the paint was still kind of wet, this allowed the markers to blend. I also kind of learned that laying down paint and then dragging another color through that paint you laid down helps blend things as well. 
It also made a very lovely texture that I really like. This is the kind of look I wanted for the hair, but I wasn't totally sure how to achieve. A part of me debated if I wanted to go back over the hair, but I decided to just leave it be just to be safe. I didn't want to overwork the piece. Now for the eyes, I shaded the sclera with marker 41, it's a light purple. Then I used a variety of greens to color the eyes. I was kind of attempting to color the eyes in the same kind of way that I do for my digital work, but I was also trying to not be too over ambitious. The eyes are really important to me, so I did not want to mess them up. It was kind of nice only needing to worry about coloring the one eye though, <laughs> uh, since the other one is winking. Also, if you want to see another artist use these markers, I recommend checking out Rin Spirit Art's video that she recently made about these markers. I learned a lot by watching her process and she does such a great job using a variety of colors and also blending them. It was really inspiring to me. Lastly, to tighten up the piece and add finishing details, I'm using my water-based markers that have a super fine nib to add line art and also fill in the eyelashes. I technically could have used the paint markers for the eyelashes, but I wanted to have a lot of control, so I used the liners instead. And it can sometimes be hard to get super tiny details with the brush nibs, so yeah, the fine liners were a good choice for this. Oh, and I just noticed I never read Dahlia's description to you. Uh, so Dahlia loves to take care of the animals that surround her cottage. She has a really fun and bubbly personality. And I also almost forgot I decided to add a background. <laughs> I didn't want to use any water mediums because I was scared of ruining the character. I really should have drawn the background first. Uh, but I didn't think about that at the time. So I used color pencil to fill in the background of blue and then added some leaves to make the background feel a bit more interesting. And so here's my finished piece of Dahlia. Thank you so much for submitting her, mini mini Alex. And I hope you like the picture of her. I had so much fun drawing her, she's super cute. So let's see who the wheel has me draw next. The entry option the wheel chose this time is YouTube hashtag. Not very many people submit with this option, so when I counted, there was 45 entries. I do apologize that the wheel didn't choose the more popular entry options like email, but this is kind of what happens when things are random. Anyways, the number it chose was 27, so I counted all the way down to 27, and this submission had two characters. They are based on the sun and moon. I decided to draw Mono because I felt like he would have a good amount of contrast to the piece I just did of Dahlia. Once again, this illustration will be just a headshot to help keep things in my comfort zone. At first, I wasn't totally sure what pose I wanted to draw. However, as I was sketching out ideas, I thought I could have the picture include the little moon person that sits on Mono's shoulder. I also have Mono's hand grab the scarf to make the pose feel a bit more interesting. I do apologize that I do simplify the details on the little moon person a lot. I did this because I felt like it would be hard to draw all the little details. Also, I didn't realize you included a more detailed picture of the outfits until later, so I was trying to figure things out based off of the tiny versions. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that, but I still did try to keep the outfits kind of similar. After my sketch was done, I printed it off and now I'm transferring the sketch to my watercolor paper using a mechanical pencil with purple lead. I used purple because there's a lot of purple in Mono's design. Because I transferred the previous piece and this piece at the same time, I was not yet aware of how much the lead blends into the lighter colors. However, because I had now colored Dahlia's picture, I was aware of this. So before coloring the picture with markers, I went over the picture with my kneaded eraser to pick up extra pigment. And I also go over the character with a very light purple wash of watercolor. The watercolor will kind of seal in the sketch so it won't mix in with the paint. Once the wash of paint dried, I could start going in with markers. For Mono, I am coloring the skin in a bit of a different process. I'm starting with my first shading color being O2. I used O2 as the base color for Dahlia, but because Mono seems to be paler, I'm using it as a shadow color for him. For deeper shadows, like the one under his nose, I'm using color 21. I also use this color for darker shadows under his hair. I decided to start with the shadows first because I didn't really need to lay down the base color for all of the skin. This kind of just makes it so I need to color some areas twice. To blend out the shading on the cheeks and his nose, I switch back and forth between all of my colors very quickly to kind of work while the colors are wet. Because of what I learned with the previous piece, I felt a bit more confident with blending out the colors. Or I felt like I had a better idea of what I was doing. 
a random topic, but I've been playing Princess Peach Showtime, and it is so cute. The different outfits, the gameplay, the animation, it's all just adorable. The game is kind of easy, but it does have its more challenging moments, especially if you want to get all of the teal star things in the levels. I'm currently at the boss for the second floor. Uh, one of my favorite levels was the detective level. It was fun trying to figure out the mystery. I also really liked the level where you make all the different sweets and stuff. That one's so cute. The game overall has a lot of charm to it and it's super girly. Like I said, it is kind of easy, but in some ways I kind of like that. It's a simple chill game to play after I'm done with work. <laughs> I thought about moving on to the hair next, but I decided to color the clothes since I knew they were going to take a good amount of time. Also, I am going to explain now that I try my best to match up the colors to the character's original design, but I didn't have quite the right purples. The hair and some of the clothing details are a very, very light purple, and I don't have a purple that goes that light. I try my best to vary the values and kind of trying to match them up. Uh, but yeah, the values won't match the original character perfectly, so I do apologize for that. However, I do make an edited version of the scanned picture that more closely matches the colors. That is one thing about paint markers, you can feel a bit limited since they aren't like tube paints where you can mix your own colors, but they are much more convenient to use and not nearly as messy. I tend to make a lot of mess when I work with standard acrylic paints. <laughs> Plus with paint markers, you don't have to worry about the paint on your palette drying up or wasting paint. They are a super convenient way to use acrylic paint. I have always kind of liked paint markers and the look of them. However, they never really became a main art supply that I used because I often wasn't a fan of the nibs. However, I love the brush nibs of these markers. They make the paints easier to blend. You can also very easily color larger or smaller areas. They are just very versatile. I use the Artex paint markers a decent amount in my sketchbook since they are very fun to use and you can cover larger areas pretty quickly. I am very happy that this picture has more of the painty and blendy feeling that I was wanting. I think you can tell by the shading on the fabric that I was feeling more confident with the blending of colors and I was having a ton of fun mixing all the different colors. I was trying my best to separate the different values so that the picture is readable. I didn't want the different parts to be the exact same purple, so I tried to think about the value placement a lot. It was kind of tricky since I only had like five or six purples. <laughs> Especially for the hair, I wanted to try to keep it feeling lighter since it is a very light purple. I even used white later to try to lighten the color some. I did allow myself to work with the darker values on the right side where I felt like the shadows would be. Something I did learn as I was coloring the hair is that it's kind of easier to blend the colors if you have a layer of paint under the colors. Because I am using watercolor paper, the paper kind of absorbs the paint and this is good because it helps the paint get nice coverage and a pretty even coat with minimal streaking. I find when I use very smooth paper, the markers streak a lot more. However, once I have some layers of paint down, the paint is not able to soak into the paper as much and it stays wet for longer. And because of this, blending is a bit easier and the paint moves around a bit more. I use this technique to my advantage a lot when I apply the light yellow and light blue highlights to the hair. Oh, also, I hope the expression I gave the character is okay. There wasn't much for info about Mono's personality, but it seems like maybe he would be friendly with the little moon person, so I drew him with a more friendly expression. Another random topic, but these coming months are going to be very busy and I'm hoping I'll be able to keep up with videos. We have different things going on this summer, like I'm going on a one week vacation with my husband and in-laws. My family never really did family vacations because when you are a larger family, vacations are pretty expensive. Plus a lot of us don't like traveling. <laughs> but since I never really went on vacations, I'm looking forward to it. I'm also a bit nervous, but I'm always nervous for new things. So it's kind of a mixture of excited and a bit nervous, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll have a lovely time. Another thing is that my husband and I will most likely be moving this summer, so that will be an interesting process. My husband has to drive pretty far for work, so we are moving closer to where he works. I'm both kind of excited for the moving process and not excited for the moving process. <laughs> It'll be bittersweet moving from our current apartment. It's been a really good home. And I've definitely gotten to a point where I feel settled in this place. Uh, so it'll be interesting having to kind of start over again. 
but our new place will have more space so that'll be very nice our current place is kind of filled to the brim <laughs> Like if we ended up having a baby and we still lived at this apartment, I have no idea where we would put all the baby stuff. <laughs> um, but back to the picture, I colored the little moon person and now I'm on to the eyes. It was tricky to color them since they are kind of small. They aren't as big as Dahlia's. But I just made sure to take my time and try to be very careful. The most stressful part was adding the darkest purple. However, these paint markers can cover up mistakes, so even if I did mess up, I probably could have found a way to fix it. Lastly, I'm going to tighten things up with the fine liners. I really enjoyed working with these paint markers and highly recommend them if you're interested in trying out paint markers. I love how many colors come in these sets and I really enjoyed my experience with them. The colors are bright, they have good coverage, and are a very convenient way to use paint. Like I said, make sure to look at each set and decide which one is best for you. I personally love the anime set, but you may prefer the regular set. You can even get both if you really want to. Uh, just remember there are duplicate colors between the sets, but it can be nice to have extras. If you want to check out these markers for yourself, there are links in the description. So here's my finished picture of Mono. He was super fun to draw and I hope you like it. Like I said, I tried my best to match the marker colors to his original colors, but they did end up pretty different. So here's the scanned version where I edited the colors a bit to make them match a bit closer. Thank you so much to everyone that submitted characters. Like I said, there were so many amazing characters I couldn't decide on who to draw, so that's why I randomly picked. I plan to do more of these kind of videos in the future, so to keep up to date on when I plan to do these, you can follow me on threads, Twitter, Instagram, or you can turn on all notifications here on YouTube so that when I make a post to the community tab, you'll be notified. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!